Are we heading into a digital dark ages? I'm John Deere and today we're going to talk about digital information. How much data is there? How is it stored? And what happens when those storage methods become obsolete? There are many who think we're going to quickly lose all of that digital information heading into a digital dark ages. Let's start with a very basic question. How much data is there? There's so much digitally stored data in the world, we are running out of ways to quantify it. We're even running out of words to call it. We've gone from bytes to megabytes to gigabytes to terabytes to petabytes and all the way to zettabytes. A few years ago, we generated and saved 1.8 trillion gigabytes in that year alone. That's enough data to fill 7.5 billion 32 gigabyte Apple iPads. That's enough iPads to build the entire Great Wall of China at double its height. International Data Corporation tells us that the amount of data we are saving doubles every 18 months. By the year 2020, the human race will have stored over 40 zettabytes of data. That's a four with 22 zeros after it. That's a huge amount of data. In fact, there's so much data, we're looking for new words to describe how much data there is. The new leading candidate is the yada byte, which is this many bytes. And here's the thing about all that data. It's stored in today's technology. And one thing we know about technology is that it becomes obsolete. This is the floppy disk. Its case was made out of cardboard, which was eventually replaced by plastic. It was cutting edge technology in the 1980s. Then came the jazz drive, which stored up to two gigabytes of data. It was cutting edge. Then came the CD-ROM, the DVD, flash drives, external hard disks, and on and on. Try to get a reader for a cardboard floppy disk today. Very difficult, if not impossible. And even if you could read the disk, try to interpret the data that's on the disk. The software that interpreted that data has long since disappeared. Do you remember WordStar? In May of 1983, Byte magazine called WordStar, without a doubt, the best known and probably the most widely used personal computer word processing program. 30 years later, your WordStar documents are inaccessible. And that's true for all types of software and operating systems across the board. So why does it matter? It matters because more and more of our information is being stored in digital media. This is a biography of Abraham Lincoln. It was researched by scrupulously examining his letters and papers. Even though they were 150 years old, they exist as real objects preserved in various libraries around the world. If these had only existed as data, we can expect that they would be inaccessible today, just the way documents from 40 years ago are inaccessible already. And it's not just historical information that's stored digitally. Today, we store all kinds of critical personal information, from medical records, to bank accounts, to personal histories. Even books, music, film, and photographs are now all digital. With all this information being stored digitally, it's clear to many that we will soon lose our own history. The cost and effort of translating this ballooning body of data to new technology as it comes along is unapproachable. But that doesn't mean we'll go down without a fight. This is digitalpreservation.org, the US government's website dedicated to preserving digital information. It covers the many groups and resources devoted to exactly this problem, how to preserve data over time. And the United States is not the only government concerned with this. Many other governments also have agencies focused on this problem. Even Google's own vice president, Vint Cerf, warns us about exactly this problem. According to Cerf, we are nonchalantly throwing all of our data into what could become an information black hole without realizing it. Surf recommends periodically taking a digital snapshot of not only the data, but everything required to interpret the data. Others recommend that we should print and store hard copies of critical data to preserve for the long term. However, as digital objects become less and less susceptible of just printing, because they are multi-layered and hypertextual, even this is a limited solution. 
The solutions will probably be many and varied and targeted at just the most critical information that we want to preserve for our future generations. If you like this episode, please subscribe. It's what keeps us alive. You can also check out our website, wownowiknow.com, for a lot of other interesting stuff you didn't know. I'm John Deere for Wow Now I Know, and as always, thanks for watching.